studying shadows like an indoor cat until dusk when the sky walks me home. How far has the ancient Illuminati secret society network penetrated world politics? If you read the many books published about conspiracies, then you will learn that many leading authors have alleged that British Prime Minister Tony Blair is a high-ranking Freemason. Mr. Blair is a Queen's Council barrister a profession which has its roots in the Temple Bar, built in London by the Knights Templar Secret Society in the 12th century. According to many authors, Tony Blair follows the tradition of Masonic membership amongst large numbers of barristers and judges. Mr. Blair is allegedly a member of the 1591 Studholm Masonic Lodge which meets, amongst other places, at the Café de Paris in London. The Prime Minister has defended his role in lobbying on behalf of a wealthy Labour Party donor who was negotiating to buy a steel company from the Romanian government. Mr Blair wrote a letter in support of Lakshmi Mittal, an Indian billionaire who lives in London. Mr Blair said the letter was a standard one, written on the advice of the Foreign Office. However, opposition MPs are calling for an inquiry into allegations that his intervention helped to clinch the deal for Mr. Mittal's company, which is registered in a Caribbean tax haven. Our political correspondent, Norman Smith, reports. Lakshmi Mittal donated more than £100,000 to Labour after the last election. Shortly after that, Mr. Blair wrote a letter to the Romanian Prime Minister in support of a successful bid by Mr. Mittal's company, L&M Holdings, to buy a Romanian steelworks. A retired solicitor once described barristers like Tony Blair as highly paid professional liars. So it is unlikely that Tony Blair will ever come clean about his membership of a secret society. However, one thing we can be sure about. The Masonic establishment at the heart of British society does not like being probed or investigated when it comes to matters of Masonic membership. A recent select committee inquiry chaired by Labour MP Chris Mullins found that the Metropolitan Police Force and Judiciary were unwilling to force their members to disclose if they were members of secret societies. In a series of embarrassing revelations in the 1970s and 1980s, the British author Martin Short established that the Scotland Yard Vice Squad and senior CID officers were all Masons and taking bribes from pornographers in London, Soho. Martin Short estimates that one in six British police officers are Masons and that there are approximately 600,000 Freemasons in Britain today. Many Freemasons occupy highly paid jobs at local borough councils across Britain, which often have Masonic temples inside council buildings, maintained at the taxpayer's expense. In Scotland, Masons used to proudly parade through the streets. After the exposure of local authority frauds involving corrupt Masonic solicitors and councillors, British Freemasons went underground and now rarely march in view of the public. The public image of British Freemasonry has been damaged by the revelation that supercriminal Kenneth Noy and the men responsible for the Brinks Matt Gold bullion robbery were all Masons. As Prime Minister, 
Tony Blair has frequent meetings with the Queen. She herself is Grand Patroness of International World Freemasonry, which has its Grand Lodge of England headquarters near Drury Lane in London. The British government employs a huge number of civil servants, magistrates, judges, solicitors and officials, which have all historically been Freemasons. The deceased author of The Brotherhood, Stephen Knight, says that penetration of Freemasonry into the British establishment goes way beyond policemen and parish councils. Knight says that the Palace of Westminster, home to the British Parliament, is used as a meeting place for at least two Masonic lodges. One of these lodges is called the New Welcome Masonic Lodge, which regularly hosts blood-curdling rituals and ceremonies inside the Palace of Westminster. Members of Parliament from all political parties gather together wearing white gloves, sashes, lambskin aprons and wielding ceremonial daggers swearing bloodthirsty oaths of allegiance to each other. Just where this leaves British democracy is anyone's guess, but the fact that these secret ceremonies take place in a building paid for by the British taxpayer leaves one wondering if Freemasons do not see themselves as superior to the average British citizen. Many researchers claim British Prime Minister Tony Blair is a high-ranking 33rd degree Freemason. This is the highest rank of Mason, and this elite cabal of British Freemasonry has its own headquarters at number 10 Duke Street, which some claim is connected to number 10 Downing Street via a secret underground tunnel. Inside the Duke Street headquarters of the Supreme Council of the 33rd degree, there is a red room, a black room, and a chamber of death which Masons use for macabre rituals based on ancient Jewish mysticism and Enochian magic. Once initiated into the 33rd degree, Masons are told they are superior beings and the human population are referred to as being profane goyim, which means cattle. If Tony Blair is indeed a 33rd degree Freemason, then he is following in the footsteps of previous Prime Ministers, who have all been members of either Freemasonry, the Knights Templar, or the Round Table, which was started by Sir Cecil Rhodes following his economic conquest of Zimbabwe during the 19th century. Winston Churchill was also a 33rd degree Freemason, initiated into the Studholm Lodge at the headquarters of the 33rd degree in May 1901. Winston Churchill was also a member of the Order of Druids, who often meet at Stonehenge during the spring equinox, whilst members of the British public are forcibly restrained from this ancient megalithic site by thousands of police officers. The ancient Druid rituals at Stonehenge can be considered harmless when compared to the murderous, satanically inspired ceremonies of Freemasonry. Most Freemasons do not progress beyond the first three degrees or exams of initiation. These are often called the Blue Degrees. In fact, many Masons do not even realize that beyond the third degree of Master Mason that there are higher degrees. The higher degrees of Freemasonry are almost exclusively populated by men of aristocratic lineage or ex-officers of the armed forces. In all, at any one time, there are no more than a few dozen men who reach the 33rd degree. As they pass each ritual test, the ceremonies become more bizarre and include symbols which can be found in ancient Egypt, with initiates being given pompous titles such as sovereign, prince or knight. When we see Tony Blair meeting with George Bush Jr., we are actually seeing...